Hi guys and welcome to the last episode of The Career Show. I'm Saeed Mohammed, a partner in Apply For You and I'm joined by... Ifan Hussain, the founder of Apply For You. Brilliant. Now just to let you guys know who we are and where we've come from, you know, uh, we're, we're both recruiters, okay? We've been uh, individually in recruitment for the last 15 years and Apply For You was set up 10 years ago to be a helpful job platform to help job seekers like yourselves find the right job. Mm -hmm. We have been positioned specifically to help you, okay? Um, and throughout that time, you know, we've won 12 awards, one of the awards being the Gold Award for being one of the best national job boards mm -hmm. in the country, you know. Mm -hmm. um, and we're here today to sort of impart some of the humble and uh, little knowledge that we've gathered over the last 15 years together and individually mm -hmm. to help you find not just the best job, but to find the right job. And in the, in the last few episodes, the last three episodes, we've spoken about uh, step one, know yourself in mm -hmm. the job search. Hugely uh, process. important. Massively important. Step two, how to actually find a job because finding a job is a job in itself. It is. And the third point was how to write your CV effectively. Mm -hmm. And uh, today we're going to be talking about interview tips and techniques. Now, the, the daunted interview. Yeah, It's the you know. one that most people panic about, get stressed out about, but hopefully we're going to ease your pain. Definitely. I, we just wish we really had more time to talk about this stuff because the, especially with your CV and the interview, mm -hmm. how this is vitally important, right? And let's be honest, okay, what's an interview? You gotta, you're basically getting to know the employer and the employer's getting to know you. Mm -hmm. And the massive misconception is that uh, uh, interviewees or candidates always think that they're in the hot seat. They think well, it's a grilling for it them. It is grilling. It shouldn't be. No, exactly, it shouldn't mm -hmm. be, and it's not. At the end of the day, the way that the employer is evaluating you, you know what guys? You should be evaluating the employer yep. in exactly the same way. Are you the right employers for me? Are mm -hmm. you going to help me get to? Uh, uh, are you going to help me achieve my dreams mm -hmm. and ambitions? Mm -hmm. Am I going to progress my career with you? Can I earn money with you? Am I going to flourish with you? You yep. know, you got to be looking at these questions, and more importantly, asking yourself the question when you're looking at them in the white of their eyes: mm -hmm. Can I work with you? Do I get on with you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's really important. So, you know, an interview, it doesn't need to be scary. No. All right. And don't don't go into the interview. A lot of people say, oh, I'm nervous. I'm nervous. I'm nervous. Of course, you're going to be nervous. Yeah. It's an interview. It's like getting up on stage um, and acting in front of a thousand people. Yes. You know, it's going to be daunting. And the idea is not to stress out about it, is to understand you're going to be nervous. But the secret is, is not let the other person see or know that Absolutely. you're nervous. Absolutely. It's very important to understand that first impressions count yep. without a doubt. Forget interviews, just generally in life, you know. Mm -hmm. um, it's very important that when you go to an interview, you look sharp, you look well-groomed, you're well-presented, you know. Shoes are shiny, you don't have any stains or, you know, mm -hmm. uh, scruffy clothes. Mm -hmm. And also, importantly, smell good because we, we discussed in the last episode, we had a little story about how one of our candidates went to an interview and, yeah, yeah. he didn't smell that pleasant, you know. So all of these things make a massive difference mm -hmm. you know and we spoke in the last episode okay about cvs that it takes 12 seconds yeah for a recruiter or a potential employer to uh, um actually decide make, whether they like make the a CV decision yeah i mean in 12 seconds someone's deciding your fate so that's why a cv is so important but what about in person well, in person, first impressions count. It's, probably, it's definitely not seconds. You've got more time than seconds, but the first impressions do count. So you've got to have a good handshake, smile, eye contact, mm -hmm. have confidence, don't be shy. Yes, you're going for an interview. You're going to be nervous. Just don't let the other person see that you're nervous. And that's the secret. And just on that, I've got a story to tell. You know Michael Jackson? Everyone yep. knows Michael Jackson, yep. right? Uh, King of Pop. Amazing mm -hmm. on stage. You would see him and you'd think, wow, this guy, he is the most confident performer you've ever seen. Ever walk in his sleep. But you know what I heard? Behind stage, he used to be shaking in his boots. He used to get so yep. sweaty. Some say that's why he used to wear the, the golden the glove or whatever it was. Um, because his hands used to get really yeah. sweaty. But could you ever see that on stage? Never. Never. And that's the secret. You could be who you are. Don't change that. You're not going to change that overnight. Absolutely. And that's one of the things that we've really pushed through with our business and with the tips and t um, techniques that you've got to learn today. And hopefully what you've learned over the last few sessions is that we want to focus on the bits that you can actually uh, change really quickly, yes. really easily, which is don't try to become a less nervous person. You're going to be nervous. You might be, be shaking in your beats. But 
Don't let the other person see it. Don't yeah. let your interviewers pick, pick up on that. Absolutely. Okay. And one way to get over being nervous, right, is, and this, we see this time and time again, mm -hmm. Is do your research on the company and the job that you're going for. Mm -hmm. I mean, how many times if you, if you and I actually sat there interviewing somebody mm -hmm. and said, okay, what do you know about us? Mm -hmm. I don't know. I don't know anything. Well, why have you not taken the time to research the company, yeah. you know? And of course, you're going to be nervous because if you don't know what you're interviewing for, what you're talking about, then yeah. If you're not nervous, then yeah, there's something wrong See, with you. See, I kind of disagree with that, Said. I don't think, because a lot of people come to us, and I think I mentioned it in one of the other sessions, but... Um, come to us and say that, oh, I can't do a mock interview or I'm not ready for the interview because I haven't researched the company. That is not the first thing to worry about. No, what but you when you're be... in an interview, okay, yeah. and sitting in front of your potential employer mm -hmm. and you don't know anything about that company mm -hmm. or what they do, that doesn't translate well though, does it? Of course not. I'm not saying don't research the company. Of course you've got to research the company. But even before you research the company, you must research yourself. Yeah, of because course. When That's you know how it yourself, off. when you know yourself, when you know what you're going to talk about, which you're going to be talking about yourself, right? Yeah. If you've got some rehearsed, pre-planned stories that you're going to tell them about yourself, guess what? You're going to perform a lot better. Yeah. So make sure you do do that. Make sure you know, do your research, research yourself, know the best points, know the bits that you really want to mention to that company mm. because you think it's going to add value to them, and. Along with that, like Said mentioned, and it's not too far second, is research the company. <laughs> well, know what they to, do, yeah. know Absolutely. what they do, know what they're all about. Because if you think about it, once you know yourself and you've done the research mm -hmm. in the company, you can then bridge that gap. For example, that you know, you know what the company does, mm -hmm. you know what you've done, and you can then uh, mention your USPs mm -hmm. and highlight how that would be a feature and a benefit mm -hmm. to the actual company as Definitely. well, right? Um, also, questions. You get asked, you know, when we're in interviews, right, we get asked a number of uh, really different questions, right? Mm -hmm. Sometimes, you know, we've got textbook answers, but they don't cut the mustard, right? Yep. So, for example, a question like, you know, what was your reason for leaving your last company? Okay, so reason for leaving my last company, you get tons of people just go into a waffle. Indeed. They start telling them everything. So, yeah, I left because, you know what, I came in late one day. My manager didn't like it. I started to uh, panic and I started to tell him that my uh, uh, I came down the stairs uh, to throw stuff out the bin. And I went to the bin and the door closed on me. And at the very same time, my neighbour was running out and uh, my cat got run I, over. I know exactly where that <laughs> example is from. <laughs> and and you see what I mean? They just go into a waffle, a panic about why they left. Hey, yeah. Be to the point, be clear, it didn't work out, or I made a mistake, I came in late one day, my boss didn't like it. Be honest, put your hands up yeah. and move forward in the next question. And importantly, don't show too much emotion within there because, yep. look, it's very, very easy, okay, when one's had a bad experience. I know when I've mm -hmm. had an argument with the wife or someone, you know, that I've, I feel very upset, emotionally charged, right? And it's okay, so like, oh, she did this, he said that, she said did that, mm -hmm. right, okay? Look, at the end of the day, be factual. Okay, yep. it's a case of, for example, if you've been let go, well, you know, uh, just be straightforward, be honest. If you didn't get on with your manager, obviously don't say, didn't get on with the manager. Well, we had different visions. We had yeah. different it's, targets it's that, that we need to achieve, across. you know, and be dispassionate about it. Because the worst thing you can ever say in an interview about leaving your old job is, well, the worst thing you can do is badmouth your previous employers. Because yep. if you can badmouth them, you can badmouth your new employers mm -hmm. as well. Be factual, be to the point. Okay, and don't show too much emotion within your answer on that. Mm -hmm. So one of the most uh, common questions you're going to get is, why should I hire you? So why should I hire you, Said? Well, because I'm good looking, right? <laughs> yeah, and this is this, uh, mustache, right? And you'll get a giggle from that answer, which is not bad. But tell me more. Why should I hire you? Okay. Well, look, there, there's a number of reasons you can hire me. With the vast experience that I bring, okay, uh, and uh, within recruitment itself, mm -hmm. the fact that I've managed teams, led teams, developed teams, developed new markets as well. And more to the point, okay, it's not about me, you hiring me. It's about what we can do together bringing what you've already got and my experiences mm -hmm. and linking the two together. is the sort of answer that I'd give. Obviously, do I, I, like do I know more about the actual job? I'd probably go into more detail. Yeah, no, I you like know? it. I like it. It's good. You're showing your experience. You're showing your belief in yourself, which is hugely important. Um, and, uh, you know, just on that point about belief, you know what Muhammad Ali said once? He said, you know what? I would have been the best at whatever I had done. Mm. And who can, who can deny that? No, no one can. He was the best boxer. Yeah. A lot of people claim he was the best boxer of all time. I do think he the was best the best boxer. politician. Yes. Yeah. Uh, the best uh, human rights activist. <laughs> yes, indeed. You know, wow, that's belief. 
So that's what I loved with your answer, that you had the belief. The only thing that I think that was missing, Saeed, was giving me examples. Yeah. And don't forget, in an interview, giving examples is well, probably... Well, to be fair, I didn't know which job I was interviewing I for. I know, I, I, you, know? I, you get the job anyway, Saeed. But, <laughs> but hey. give examples. You know what, when you're saying stuff like, you know, um, with my experience, hey, do you know what, don't think I've read your CV. Who are you, Saeed? I haven't met you before. I'm not joking. But do you see what I mean? Go into an interview not... Um, having the presumption that this person doesn't know me from Adam. Yeah, exactly. And give examples, repeat what is on your CV. You spent time researching, if you read our last show, right? Yeah. Researching, writing up your CV, knowing your best points. Make sure they're highlighted. Don't assume the employer has read it. Me and Saeed go for many interviews and we print the CV out while we're walking down to the interviewer. In fact, to be honest with you, uh, the one that I had this morning, mm -hmm. I only read the interview while uh, she was talking. I was just flicking yeah. through, you know. So don't think it's on my CV. Why doesn't he or she know about it? Repeat it. Use it in your interview. Yep. Okay. Brilliant. So what's your biggest weakness? Oh, wow. That's the question of all questions. Hey, <laughs> how do you battle that? What's my biggest weakness? So um, uh, I would say that my biggest weakness is my organization skills. I'm someone that I'll put my hands up to it. I'm, I wasn't the most organized person. I have 101 things going through my mind, 101 things on my desk. Um, but I've learned with time, with experience, how to now be super organized. So if you look at my phone, if you look at my, my papers, I've got 101 task lists. And that's the only way I can keep myself organized. I still don't think I'm perfect. Perfect, Saeed. Um, but I'm far more organized than uh, I used to be five years ago. And I'm probably far more organized than most people you'll meet today. Um, but it's still work in progress. And I love task lists. And I've done a lot of research on how time management and how to um, be super organized. And that's what I use in my day to day. Brilliant. Good answer. Now, just on that, that is question. also sorry, go that on. is quite a textbook answer. Yep. But did you see what happened then? OK, textbook answer. I'm disorganized. Number one. Always make sure you know what your biggest weakness is because mm -hmm. nobody is perfect, okay? Number two, when you do give a textbook answer, okay, and you are giving a weakness, always make sure that you turn it into positive. Yeah. Like, for example, what Irfan just said, my biggest weakness is my organization. Uh, I've got a hundred uh, things going through my mind, so straight away that shows that he's thinking about the task and the job at hand. So mm -hmm. this guy is never going to be sitting, and I'm thinking to myself, he's never going to be sitting at his desk, not doing nothing, idle-minded, mm -hmm. watching uh, YouTube or Facebook, right? That he's thinking about things, okay? Then he went on to say that, look, you know, through with experience and with time and by attending a lot of courses, I have managed to do yeah. this and this. Now, wrap it up, wrap in, a it up in a positive way. It. Now, one thing that I remember, I actually, uh, early on in my career, um, after I got married, right? I got asked that same question as well. Uh -huh. So when the guy goes to me, uh, what's your biggest weakness? I was like, my wife. <laughs> my <laughs> wife is my biggest weakness. He goes, do you have any other weaknesses? Yes, food. You know. Well, you're lucky you can... you're funny, Saeed, because I don't think I could get away with that one. <laughs> Again, it's down to your personality as well. You've got to make it sure really that your is. answers, okay, really um, reflect your personality as well. Please do not just go in with simple things like, you know, organization. If you do have weakness, okay, mm -hmm. try and find one. In fact, you know what? I had a candidate. Everyone has a weakness. Everyone has a weakness. I had a candidate who actually Googled a very unique mm -hmm. weakness, okay, mm -hmm. and I ended up giving him a job after that. Yeah. I mean, look, the most important thing is any we everyone has weaknesses. Yes. No one is perfect. Go for a weakness that is true yes. to what you are because they're going to work it out sooner or later. Totally. Anyway. And show them how you've um, improved that weakness and you've turned it into a positive. Without as a long doubt. as you do that, you would answer the question better than what most people do, which is saying I'm a perfectionist. Um, I take ages to complete a task. Exactly. You know, and they've just left it like that. They've left it at I'm a perfectionist. I like to do yeah. things. And what an employer is then thinking is that this person then spends a long time doing a task, which not every employer wants. Yeah, perfectionist is great, yeah. but they're spending a long time doing it. Um, so just make sure that you are showing how you're wrapping it up. And by you giving a good, unique answer that's uh -huh. true to yourself shows that you know yourself. You know, and that uh, is the main foundation of finding a job, knowing yourself. Yep. Um, and obviously knowing your CV. So yes. when you are in an interview, they're going to ask you questions about your CV, about your career history, about your education. So know your CV. Yes. And what indeed. I always say to every candidate is make sure that you have prepared stories about your work experience. So if you've worked for the Carphone Warehouse, which I mentioned earlier in one of the other shows, um, then you know they're going to ask you, so what did you do at Carphone Warehouse? Yep. 
So don't sit there and then think, oh, wow, where did that question come from? That's quite, uh, you know, it's common sense, right? You know they're going to ask you about it. So prepare it. And in that story, you will have some of the stuff about what you did at Carphone and Warehouse, what your main responsibilities yeah. were, what you achieved. Yes, How important absolutely. is that? I was a top salesperson. I achieved recognition when I was, I sold the most expensive iPhone available. Yeah. You know, talk about your achievements and then be specific and then give examples. Absolutely. So just last week, I ended up closing, blah, 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 blah. And we're actually going to go through a few tips with you in a second. Without a doubt, you know. Um, also, with regards to an interview, okay, um, your body language is going to be really, really important, mm-hmm. without a doubt, you know. If you're, for example, um, sort of sitting there, cross mm-hmm. arm, that's closed, that's not mm-hmm. good, you know. Sit there, face on, okay, open body language, looking them uh, mm-hmm. right in their eye. When they're talking, you know, just a simple slight nod of the head to show that you're listening, that you're yeah. taking on board everything that they're saying, you know. Don't slouch back in the chair, be, you know, show that you're interested in what they're talking about. Absolutely. All those things are really, really important. Now, also, you know, um, some people find it hard to retain information because they're on the hot seat, on mm-hmm. the spot, right? Never ever be afraid of taking a notepad and pen mm-hmm. into an I interview. Love that. You know, it yeah. shows that you're um, organised and you're taking information. It shows a good mm-hmm. characteristic of yourself. You yeah. know, uh, and all, obviously you can just say, "Listen, I uh, hope you don't mind, but do you mind if I take some notes?" You know, mm-hmm. ask and get on with it. And the beautiful thing with that is that you can have prepared questions that you want to ask them. Don't forget, an interview is not one-sided. An interview is two-way. So make sure that you're asking them questions and finding out about their business, finding about what they want. And and through that, you can tell a better story about yourself. Without a doubt. And what I'll say again, make sure you research three questions you want to ask. And not the simple questions that you can find the information out online, like how many offices do you have? How boring (laughs) is that question? Or uh, when did you establish or when did you start up? Yeah. Jump onto Google, you can work that out within Absolutely. 30 seconds. Ask them questions which will impress them. Without a doubt. What are your future plans? What sectors are you looking to go into? If you want to ask about offices, which um, countries are you looking to expand into? Yep. And ask questions which show that you're interested in the growth of the business and you're quite business minded. Okay? Absolutely. You know, now... It's all well and good, you know, sitting Mm -hmm. here saying, yeah, say this at the interview, say that. Mm -hmm. You could do so much more. These guys can do so much more, right? Mm -hmm. Before the interview, for example, just doing mock interviews Mm -hmm. with each other. Yep. You know, get a friend, say, listen, I've got an interview, do a mock interview, you know, Mm -hmm. uh, help me out, let's do a quick practice run. Now, yes, you may be a bit shy, you know, doing Mm -hmm. a bit of role play, but do not undervalue uh, the importance of doing a Mm -hmm. mock interview. Exactly. How many interviews do we give to our candidates, mock interviews, on the phone, face-to-face, yeah. through Skype, uh, FaceTime? We always do that. And if anyone yeah. has interviews, and you, especially if you've got an interview through applyforyou.com, simply give us a call. We'll run you through that prep and try Absolutely. to help you. Uh, and that's what we're here for. Okay. Another point as well, okay, is research the person that you're meeting. You know, mm-hmm. Try and get a feel of their personality. <clears throat> for example, um, we, uh, in fact, a few months ago, I had uh, somebody come for an interview. Mm-hmm. I think you, you were off on that day. But um, this guy, he had basically researched my favorite football team. Yeah. Okay. He had researched everything. So what he I did. Remember you telling me that. Yeah. You remember? So first thing he did, right? <coughs> so he went onto LinkedIn, saw my LinkedIn profile. And LinkedIn is great for that. So it's brilliant. It had everything on mm-hmm. there that I did professionally. From LinkedIn, he then basically Googled my name mm-hmm. uh, and then put Facebook next to it and got through to my Facebook account. Okay. So the family, the kids, Good. and all of that. And then through there, found Instagram and all that. And at the mm-hmm. interview, he's like, oh, yeah, so side, obviously, you know, you, you've got, uh, you know, you, you've got the kids and mm-hmm. just let you know, my, my son, you know, he's roughly the same age as your son. Mm-hmm. And have you found, and straight away, that rapport was there. Yeah. He'd done his research. Mm-hmm. He understood me as a person and my personality it's, was able to it's talk hugely important. on that level. It's hugely important. I mean, I remember one of the placements that we made, uh, the, the, the guy was in there for an interview for an hour. And he spent 45 minutes talking about golf yeah. with the employer yeah. uh, and about five minutes or so talking about the job and yes. what he will be doing. And he ended up getting the job. He did indeed. Just because of common ground, common interest. Yes. And that's what makes people take. It does indeed. It does indeed. It creates that rapport. Mm-hmm. You get to know one another, okay? Um, and more importantly, you know, it just shows that you've taken the time mm-hmm. to do your research into yeah. these individuals as well. 
So look, guys, make sure that you have prepared for your interview. Now that's not just researching the company and it's not just researching yourself. Yep. It's actually thinking, what are the questions that they're gonna ask? <clears throat> And we know the common questions, right? They're going to mm -hmm. ask about what uh, what were you what were you doing in your last job? Yes. They're going to ask uh, why should I hire you? Mm -hmm. What do you bring to the table? Yeah. You know, these are common questions that they're going to ask. Why did you leave your last job? So rather than making these answers up on the spot, why not practice prepare. it and rehearse it and prepare for it beforehand? And it's very easy. We're going to give you a few tips now with what you can do. Um, actually, before we do that, why don't we ask a couple of questions to one another and just I give... I thought we already had. Yeah, we could do a few more. Um, <laughs> Obviously, with time constraints, let's get the points and then we'll uh, okay, cover Okay, perfect. That so, um, you know, one of the most important things, and we, I think we um, touched upon it, is yep. to use positive words. Indeed. So rather than saying, hey, I'm um, I'm a I'm quite good at sales. I'm quite good at sales. I'm quite good with people. You heard you hear the word quite a lot. A lot. Yeah. Quite Absolutely. a lot. Right. You hear the word quite quite a lot, um, and that's a problem. Yes. Why say is. I'm quite good at new business or I'm quite good at um, building relationships? Why not just be straight up and say I'm good at business? I'm good at building relationships. Yep. Absolutely. The, the the persona the delivery of Positive words is far better than using the word quite. Yeah, 100%. So remove the negative words, only use positive words, okay? That's tip number one. Number two, always talk in first person. Yep. So when you go to an interview, you see something like they will say, um, so, you know, what, what qualities do you think I require for this job? They will be like, oh, well, you need to be a resilient, tenacious, mm -hmm. hardworking individual. You need... That's yes, third person, right? Indeed, yeah. You need, as soon as you say you need, the interviewer is looking around, where is this person <laughs> that I need, right? <laughs> so rather than saying you need, it is, I'm a resilient person for this job. I'm going to show that resilience in my last job. I mm -hmm. was very resilient. And yep. So always talk in first person. Use the word I, 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 okay? Because it is all about you, right? It is. And just rolling off on that, the third point, use present or past, past tense. tense. Everyone can say, I'm going to be a millionaire. Right or wrong? Yes. Del indeed. Trotter, I'm going to be a millionaire. <laughs> Everyone can say that. Indeed. But how many people can say, I am a millionaire? Yeah. So talk about present or past tense. Exactly. Because that's what really matters. Not saying, I will be hardworking. Mm. Anyone can say that, I will be hardworking. But it's better to say, I am a hard-working individual, you know, currently, exactly. Saeed, I come in at seven and I'm the last person Giving to go. Giving an example. So, Brilliant. you know, be, uh, show that. Um, running off on that point, always sell yourself. So we yeah. said about positive words. We talked about unique selling points. Yes. If you looked at the earlier shows, um, so use those selling points. Use those unique selling points in your interview. Yep. What's the point of all that research if you're not going to use them? So use those selling points and always make sure you mention them. Even if you're at the end of the interview and you haven't used them so far, make sure you say, oh, just before we go, I want to highlight X, Y, and Z. Definitely. Okay. Um, another point that I think is really important is be specific. Yes. So if you're saying stuff like, um, I've got experience of building a website. Be specific. Great. How did you do it? Yeah. What program language did you build yeah, it in? Absolutely. Uh, how many visits? You what challenges you face? How many visits is that website getting? Yep. So be specific. Talking about what you just said, point number seven, side. give examples. Mm. Hugely important. I think at least one in every three questions, maybe even one in every two questions, should be followed by, by example. example. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. So if they're asking you, what do you contribute? Well, um, I contribute my ability of being uh, able to build relationships with uh, new customers. Um, mm. I'm really friendly, really open. Uh, I'm able to really quickly connect with people. Good answer, right? Yeah. No, it's rubbish. You know why? Because what I could have done is, is said very easily, just yesterday, I met the head of um, IT for BBC and uh, within 30 seconds, he had given me his business card. I knew how many kids he had and um, we we're actually going out on uh, to meet for a coffee uh, next week, Tuesday. Brilliant. So by Even giving better. an example, guess what? It's so much more believable, right? It's so much more believable and people engage with you, trust you, believe you more. Definitely. Okay. Um, uh, just one more really, uh, actually, actually two more before, before we end on the tips, is um, to tell them stories. Oh, and yes. you're good at this, Saeed. Oh, 100%. Tell them stories. Look, the, at the end of the day, guys, 
as kids, we, we love a story, you know. Yep. I know that I tell my kids a story and they're like, wow. Mm -hmm. And at, human nature never changes. We all love stories. It doesn't matter. When mm -hmm. we get people in front of us and they tell us a story about themselves, we buy into it because mm -hmm. it creates an image. So tell a story and tell it well. At the end of the day, there's no one better place to tell your story than you. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's down to you. You know yourself the best. You know who you are. You know what you want to achieve. You know what you have achieved, okay? And you're best positioned yep. to advertise it. Yeah, always, always tell a story. You know, like when people paint a picture, you know, yeah. um, I walked into work, it was really quiet. The atmosphere was quite dull. Um, and the type of person I am, I'm quite outgoing. Mm. And I tried to drum up everyone. Uh, I said, guys, let's really get on it. And by doing that, that was the best day in that business. So you build a bit of a story, a bit of Absolutely. atmosphere, and re people really buy into that. Um, and lastly, and most importantly, remember this. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. It's how you say it. Too many people stress about, oh, am I saying the right thing? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's about how you say it. There's no right or wrong answer in an interview. It's really about how you're coming across how your delivery is yeah. and just to expand on that a little bit remember what people think of you mm. is broken down into three main things especially in an interview but not just an interview just in daily life and uh just you could use it in any in any walk of life right but it's broken down to three things yeah. i know you know what they are but um what are they so the first one is i'm gonna let you handle this yeah, one. All right, good so the first one is the words the words that you're actually saying, the yeah. words that come out of your mouth, okay? How much do you reckon that's worth out of 100%? Oh, I know the answer, but I think I'm going to go for a wrong answer and say probably 7%. 7%? You know what? I was hoping you would say 70 because that's what most people think. Most people worry so much about the words or they use yeah. long-winded words that they don't even know the meaning of, <laughs> yeah. right? Just to try to sound articulate, um, but it's wrong. It is only worth the words are only worth 17% of what someone thinks of you. Indeed. Yeah. So don't panic too much about, am I using the right words? The only thing you need to do to get 17 out of 17% is to use the keywords, the researched words that you've already thought about and words that add value to the job that you're mentioning. I so mean, if you're going for a nursing job, you want to talk about looking after people, caring about people, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And more often than not, you know, people just try and throw in words that make no sense yeah. because they sound good. Yeah. Trust me, it, it doesn't, doesn't work. work. It doesn't it's work. waffle and makes you look stupid, basically. Yeah. So the words count for 17%. The next thing you want to do is look at the tone of your voice. Mm. How much do you reckon that stands for? That actually does count for a lot. What do you reckon? Why don't you tell the people? It actually counts for 22%. All right. And again, it's not the largest amount. There's only one point left, but it's 17 for the words, 22% for your tone. If you want to get 22% for your tone, yep. all you need to do is vary your tone. In Indeed. an interview, the worst thing you'll do is talk at one level all the way throughout the interview. Can you imagine how boring this would be see. if we uh, <laughs> were to do the whole show just like this? You've lost it already. So I always say a bit like Mariah Carey, increase the tone when, like, when she does the chorus and reduce the tone when she does the verses, yeah? Indeed. So um, increase and decrease your tone, you'll get it. And the last but not least, the most important point is your energy, your enthusiasm, your body language. That counts for the remainder, which is 61%. So if you have energy, if you have mm -hmm. enthusiasm, if you have belief, if you have passion, that will see through. That is the most important thing. So like I said, it's not what you say, it's, it's how, how you, you say it. Say it. So that will show your confidence, that will show that you have the belief in yourself um, and the energy, because that's the most important thing in a job, right? People want to see that you're not going to be there dull, mm -hmm. bored at your job. They want to see you have the enthusiasm for it. Because a lot of that enthusiasm, it will then also be infectious to the people mm -hmm. around you. And it's vitally important that the culture of a company is maintained and bettered. So obviously there are so many things uh, that we could go into uh, far more depth and detail mm -hmm. about this particular subject. But if you do want any more information, look, give us a call, go onto our mm -hmm. website, let us know. We'll do our level best to help you. So just to sort of wrap it all up, okay. Um, we've learned in episode one about knowing yourself. Episode two was about how to find a job because finding a job is a job within itself. Mm -hmm. The third point, okay, is about writing an effective 
CV that gets the job done and catches the eye of yeah. potential employers and agents. And today is all about the interview, uh-huh. about being confident, okay, about going there, about using positive words, uh-huh. using, um, and not just using the positive words, but also looking at how you're saying um, the sentences, giving examples, telling uh-huh. stories, painting a picture, and more importantly, you're not the only one in the hot seat. You are there in an interview. You are interviewing the client as much as the client is interviewing you uh-huh. or the uh, potential employer. And imp- very important, towards the end of every interview, always make sure you have questions to ask them. Yeah. Okay. Very important. And also, do not be afraid or scared of asking for feedback. So uh-huh. at the end of the interview, how do you think I've done? What are your thoughts? Okay. Yep. Because at the end of the day, you are trying, prompting them for an answer and you're asking them to make a decision while you're on the spot. Uh-huh. And normally where our employers aren't used to that. And when you ask them on the spot, what are your thoughts? You'll get the most you'll bonus points. You'll get the uh, most bonus points for that without a doubt. Yep. So look, guys, we are um, coming towards the end of the show. and we'll Probably just, go on for a couple yeah, of more hours, couldn't we? <laughs> easy peasy. But I uh, hope we've given you enough mm-hmm. uh, insight over the last four episodes to try and at least get yourself on the right path, you know, to help uh, prepare Mm -hmm. yourself towards that job that you want that's right for you. If at any point you do get stuck or you do want any more advice, give us a shout. You know, just come to our website, uh, which is apply, the number four, the letter you.com, apply for you.com, and we're here to help. Mm -hmm. Look, in all honesty, we wish you every success, okay, and the best of luck in your job search. It's not about finding the best job, is finding the right job mm-hmm. for you, which in turn is your best job. Thank you so much. And yeah, it's been a pleasure being here. See you later. Thank Good you. Good luck.